Hi and welcome to the channel Southwood Designs. I'm David and today we're going to be building one of these little picnic tables out of uh, teak. They're foldable legs like so that are magnetized to hold them in place and then you can see that they've got little wine glass holders here and the bottle goes in there in this one here. We'll go through step by step how it's made uh, but also what I'm going to do is build one, not only, I'll, I'll build one from scratch for this size, 60 by 40 centimetres, um, but also we'll do a round one as well so you can see how it works. So first things first, I've got a piece, 1 meter 80, 6 foot tall, I want to chop this into three. I'll get two boards out of it and then I'll use the other piece for the legs for the uh, tables. I'll get two tables out of it rather and I'll use the end for uh, legs for the tables. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Just bear with me with uh, the noise. <laughs> One cut, so I'll just um, line up and cut the other. Just going to draw that line. And then this piece here that's left will be for making the legs for the the fold-up legs for the uh, for the tables. So I'm going to mark out the holes now to drill with a hole saw for the wine glasses. I do these normally uh, six centimeters in and I'm just going to run this here so that we can look at inches as well. So six centimeters in from the end which is a bit under two and a half inches. So I just mark those now. And this timber is uh, 23 and a half inches or 600 long and uh, 16 inches or four, a bit over 400, 405 millimeters wide. And it's a standard size that I use for the, uh, for the picnic tables. And then we're going uh, 1800, uh, sorry, 180 in. So I'm just gonna line the lines up here. 180 will be one there. Um, Oops, just get that centered, which will work a bit better. So one, one there, 180, um, 60, uh, 40, so that one will be just there. There's two. And these two here, uh, 180. And 440 there. So these these spots are where the um, where the 32 millimeter I think it's 32 uh, millimeter holes are going to go for the wine glasses, and then at one end I'm going to put a uh, about a just over 100 millimeter or four inch. Is that right? 100 millimeters. Yep, a four inch hole. Um, I think I've got a 102 or a 103. Uh, millimeter hole saw that uh, that I use and that's where uh, the wine bottle goes through there at the end or you can also put uh, uh, one of the commonly used dip containers will sit in there as well and that is sitting at 90 centimeters in I had to just check on the other one so 90 just find a half white point so 20 that's 405 so 202 and a half that's going to go there. That one, that one, these are going to be cut out so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I'm just going to, I'm just going to uh, do this piece now. I'm just going to cut four holes in here and I'll repeat on this piece next to it so that we've got two, a set of two there. Um, so four holes, uh, one each side here for the, for the wine glass just to sit into. And, uh, and this one up here for the wine bottle.
So next job is just to mark out the lines that are going to be cut through here, which I do with the table saw, cut through here to be the guide for the wine glass stem to go through and then I'll cut these holes out. Um, actually, uh, I'm, I'm going to mark them out first, I'll cut the holes first and then I'll, I'll cut the lines in because otherwise I'll get some tear out in the uh, hole saw if I haven't got a complete circle to cut there. Gap is 15 uh, millimetres, which is about, half, uh, about just over half an inch, uh, about five eighths of an inch, roughly, or, or um, uh, nine sixteenths or thereabouts. Um, it's, it's not, uh, it's not going to be critical, but give or take about uh, about fifteen mils. So it's about seven and a half either side. So I'm just going to mark those out now Ooh, with a pencil that's blunt. That's not very good. A quick sharpen. Just getting close to the end of this one. Got plenty of pencils, just uh, <laughs> having to be using this one. Okay, so we're looking at seven and a half either side. Of the hole, and again, you just got to make sure that you're drilling in the center of that hole that you've marked there. That's good, and I'll just mark the other ones off camera. You don't need to see me doing all four. So these wholesale sets are pretty good. This one is uh, Sutton Tools wholesale. I got it at the local hardware store, which is Bunnings. Um, the, the sets are much better value. This is a nine piece carpenter set. It comes with a range of uh, hole saws from 16 through to 102 mils. So, um, you know, that's, that's a reasonably wide range and it mostly suits. You can buy extras. I've got uh, three or four additional ones that I've bought along the way. You can see the ones that have been used the most versus the ones that uh, are pretty well unused at this point. Which one's that? That's your, uh, that's your 54 mil, two and an eighth. This one here, the 32 mil is um, one and a quarter, because it says it on the side. And then this 102 or 103 mil one that we used, 102 mil, that's four inch. So uh, they are pretty useful and, and good value in the kit. I'll put a link in the description so that you can see which ones this, uh, these are. These are a standard kit available at, uh, as I said, the, in Australia, the local Bunnings, but you'll be able to get something similar at Home Depot and uh, in the UK at your local hardware store there too. I'm just going to drill through part way and then I'll flip over and drill the rest. press to do these bigger holes because this size this 102 mil it's quite chunky and it doesn't take much to rip your wrists I cut a 140 150 mil hole started to do it with a hand drill and uh, and it was just <clears throat> just impossible drill press makes it much easier but um, this this is probably about the limit you go to 100 mil by hand it's um, it's pretty talky and uh, 
and it can certainly cause some damage if you're not holding it firm and straight so just bear that in mind um, it's all about safety first like taking the battery out when you're uh, when you're doing things like this so yeah look if, if you've got a drill press that probably would be easier if you haven't well then you just take it nice and slowly with the with the drill you've got to watch out for tear out at the other end I wasn't too bothered about it because I'm going to get a router and route out around the holes anyway so that's not going to be an issue so I've, I've done the two circles one of the uh, rectangles I'm just going to do the last rectangle but I'll do that off camera because you don't need to see me drilling another hole Okay, so now what we need to do, I've just got the fan on because it's stinking hot today. Indoors the air conditioning's on 24 and out here it's got to be 32 and about 4,000% humidity. It's a stinker. Anywho, the positioning of these, this is a new design that I've done and I haven't done it up on uh, Fusion 360 or SketchUp which some people use. But just, just what normally happens is on the rectangular ones, the legs sit upside down uh, like so and then come across here and this one here comes across here so they sit like that and there's a couple of little magnets underneath here and here and that basically um, uh, that allows it to sit nice and flat and then when it opens out there's the ledge for the wine bottle to sit on on the on the top there uh, the problem and, and there's space for the wine glasses to sit from uh, from the top so here it is the stem that comes out so that's in the rectangular ones with the round ones you've just got to remember to make space and so it kind of seems obvious to put these here this way but what's what that means is when you open them up oh, around that way I beg your pardon when you open them up the bar is in the way of the stem so what we need to do is offset these at an angle here so the brackets are going to go here, the hinges are going to go here and here and these will close down like so across the centre because when it's closed you're not going to use the wine uh, holders and likewise with, uh, with this one here, this one will sit on this side and again when it's closed it'll just close up there so I've just got to find the position where these will sit it means I need to take a little bit off the bottom, that's no big deal, but I don't think I will need to. I'll sit these here and, um, and that'll allow space for the, uh, for the legs to close. So I'll just join these together and position them just by hand so that the distance between here and here is about the same and the distance between here and here is about the same and they're just equally over the, the holes of the uh, of the wine glass holders and it sits nicely in the center there then I'm just going to come out a little bit one two and that will be the hinge position one there and the hinge is going to sit um, facing this way anyway so that's no problem and one here out like so so I'm going to uh, just reposition these and I'm going to draw a line with my pencil that I just put away I'm going to 
draw a line where the base of the legs are going to go. There's still enough space for the hinge to go on, like so. That is beautiful. So I'm just going to take these labels off the hinge. These are a little 35mm uh, hinge, needing a size 5 screw to go in there. They're pretty tiny, but they're plenty strong enough to hold this, uh, this table up. So in this case, the wine bottle is just going to go through the centre, or a lot of the dips that you can get, so guacamole or tabbouleh, not tabbouleh, uh, guacamole or um, or onion dips or all sorts that go with crackers and biscuits, etc. They actually fit nicely in this hole and they sit in pretty well. I'm going to screw this one in first so that, uh, so that it holds for the other one to go in a bit smoother. Beautiful. That's one. Now I can just screw the other one in. Pre drill first. Oh, came through then. A bit naughty. No biggie because I can fill that very easily. So the final step is to use, I've got 20 mil magnets here and um, I just drill a hole, I use a fourth and a bit which is what this is drills a nice flat hole, the force and a bit it comes in a variety of sizes. These magnets are 20 mils. I used to use a slightly different magnet but uh, just changed to these. And, um, and the force and a bit makes the hole very nice and slim and good fitting so that the magnet sits uh, well in the hole. So on the leg I've got, uh, I've got one hole there. So as the leg shuts down the magnets join together and, uh, um, and hold the leg in place. And it's pretty effective. I've been using this method for some time, and uh, and it does uh, does the job well. So I'm just going to glue these in now. I'm just going to glue the uh, legs in with this weld bond, which I got from the local store at Buddings. It's a, a, a glue that that glues a whole raft of things, and certainly no issue with uh, gluing the magnets in. And once that glue is set, it holds them tight. So that's what I'm going to do now, and that then becomes the final part of the. Um, of the legs of the table and the finished product is coming up shortly. So there we have it, the finished rectangular tables and the round ones that you saw before. They've come up really nicely, this is antique. They look great and they're very functional and very practical. Four glasses, nice 60 centimeter uh, space, hole there for the wine bottle to sit in and uh, space for each of the uh, four glasses and all your goodies can go there dips and crackers and all sorts. So there we go. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope it uh, gives you a bit of inspiration to make something. Thank you for watching and really appreciate you taking the time to watch right through to here. Since you've done that, you might as well like and subscribe. And uh, thanks again for supporting the channel. It really is much appreciated. So don't forget, as I said, like and subscribe and, and watch out for the next videos. And uh, we'll see what else we can build in this little journey that we're going on together. Cheers.